dodge a wall. Thank you, AGDQ, for this great event. Had my father and sister deal with different forms of cancer. Well, they beat it, it left scars and issues. Hate cancer, but love AGDQ. We got a $10 donation from Blondie209. It says, having loads of fun with AGDQ. Donating this money, hoping, hoping sick people uh, have as much fun as I'm having. Get a $10 donation from mystic 7 Aja that says, Hey all, if any of you caught the opening ceremony, they had a little gig about games being the dark souls of another game. Fly Wrench is the dark souls of Portal. The cake is a lie. Alrighty, folks. We're going to take down the stream for just a moment and restart it. We'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Alrighty, we are back. Get a $5 donation from Sam137 that says, I'm more of a tabletop RPG girl, but I love watching speedruns. May the RNG be ever in your favor. Some of our other sponsors here at Games Done Quick include The Yeti. They're our official t-shirt sponsor, and they've been doing it for the last four years. In celebration of providing shirts for uh, the 10th GDQ event, they've uh, increased their donation amount to $4. So every shirt you uh, buy um, from the AGDQ collection, they'll donate $4 towards the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Check their website out at theyeti.com slash AGDQ. Tokyo Tech. Um, specializes in bringing in rare and import Japanese games to conventions, events, things like that all across the country. They feature a variety of titles such as U-Beat, Super Table Flip, Taiko no Tatsujin, and much, much more. They've got America's largest collection of independently owned import arcade cabinets. Pinball Joe has provided pinball machines for AGDQ attendees to play for free, which you can see featured on the Pinball Done Quick side stream over at twitch.tv slash pinballjoe. Any subscriptions to his channel does help prevent the Prevent Cancer Foundation as well. Do make sure you check out some of our awesome prizes available during several of our runs. Right now, any $50 donation gets you entered for a chance to win an awesome monkeying around ADDQ banner. And uh, any $75 or higher donation gets you entered for a chance to win a PS4 Pro slash uh, virtual reality bundle with 10 games included. We've got some other donation incentives to look forward to as well. Uh, we've got the Minish Cap uh, file name choice. Right now, there's a tie between Hobo and Navi as first place. So make sure you get your choices in for that one. I suggest putting your donations towards Hobo myself. Uh, there's also uh, Dark Souls 3 uh, incentive for naming the character, as well as a uh, Prince's Glitch exhibition that still needs some money before it's met and shown on stream. And right real quick, before we start our uh, next game here, we have an anonymous $5,000 donation. <laughs> it says, just like GDQ does twice every year, this game reminded me of everything it is I love about gaming. Props to, to all of the runners who have put so much time and effort into these complex, intricate niches of entertainment so that we can all watch, listen, and learn. It is a true treasure. Now we've got uh, Bismuth running uh, Snailiad. Take it away, Bismuth.
Thank you, Twinge. Uh, so yeah, I am Bismuth, and uh, this is Snailiad. Uh, before I start, I'm just gonna say really quickly, this is a, this is a Metroidvania type of game. Uh, it's a pretty short run, but uh, it's pretty fast-paced, and so I'm gonna get on with the, the, the run and what's, what's gonna happen, basically. All right. I didn't say time. Uh, you can start the timer, like, now. <laughs> All right. All right, so first thing we do is we enter secret areas through the exit, and I can reach this, uh, this upgrade that lets me jump higher. Basically, uh, you're not supposed to get that until later in the game, but um, here, this jump is tricky. And this then allows me to grab another upgrade by getting through the exit of the secret areas. Uh, there's no really glitches uh, involved in this. It's just uh, knowing the position of secret areas and uh, using that to my advantage. So now the weapon I picked up is a, is a weapon that's actually stronger than the starting weapon uh, that you would normally have to go pick up. And so that allows me to actually f uh, skip the first boss because now I have the weapon that's as strong as the weapon you would get when beating the first boss. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just head straight, head straight to the second area of the game. So that was the, the only real sequence break that's gonna happen. The rest is just like uh, really fast movement and getting to the final boss as fast as possible. <clears throat> so here uh, I have to be careful about my health. If you look in the top left corner, I have three hearts. I'm gonna pick up some heart containers, but for now I have only three. So I want my health to stay at least at one heart so I, I don't die later. Because in this room, if I had been unlucky, I would have hit a monster here and took another hit. So I had to make sure my health was high enough to take that hit. This room is pretty hard. Bunch of really precise jumps. All right, I'm good. Nice. Here, the damage I take doesn't really matter because I never die. Okay, so we're going to see the first boss, which is actually the second boss, but we skipped the first one. This boss is stumpy. Uh, the eyes are vulnerable when they're open, so I just got to hit them by shooting uh, diagonally, basically. Like this. I just want it said that this thing is terrifying. You've seen him pause a couple times. That's just him basically doing a save warp to get places faster. Yeah, yeah I can just uh, return to uh, the starting point or oh, nice. my save point. There, you uh, just did a, a small <laughs> uh, a jump through a very small gap. That's yeah, only a few it, pixels wide. It's like two or three pixels, and I just got it first try. Yeah, that was really good. Okay, my health is pretty low here, but I'm going to be okay. So, this next upgrade is Gravity Snail. Uh, this is where the run really picks up. <clears throat> so immediately after this cutscene, I'm going to save warp again. And now I can control gravity. So basically, the fastest form of movement be uh, starts to be just free falling everywhere. You can see why this is really good for a speed run. Yeah. Here, the damage I take doesn't really matter because I'm going to get healed to full by this heart container and then healed back to full by uh, this plant that I didn't eat. All right. Uh, this is not the situation I wanted to be in, so we're going to kind of improvise on this boss. Yeah, because normally there's some strategies you could do to intentionally take damage and it would let you kill him faster. By sitting inside of the, the box. Yeah, yeah I, I, messed, I, I messed up entering the boss. Okay. This should still be okay. I was, there we go. All right. I was maybe 10 to 15 seconds slow here. That, uh, good improvisation, though. No death. Yeah, I was maybe like 10 to 15 seconds slow there. 
but I much prefer that to losing a life and having to restart the, the boss. So here I'm uh, gonna pick up the final weapon of the game. It's really strong, it's the Devastator. Mm -hmm. It's basically just a larger and mean, meaner version of the Rainbow Wave I already had. And here my, my health is very... Uh, and I took an extra hit, okay. So I can possibly die in the next room, so I'm gonna have to be extra careful. Okay, I should be okay. Nice job. Yeah. Right. Here I'm gonna do a little safety save. Waste a second, but if I die in the final boss, it's gonna save 30. And this is already the final boss of the game. It has two phases. Yeah, it has two phases. The first phase is uh, the small version. The, um, the little uh, colored uh, circles deal uh, one heart of damage when they hit you, so they're not really scary. But the gray waves actually deal four hearts if they, deal, if they hit you. Since I have six hearts, it's basically death if I get hit by those. But we're good here. All right, that's all. Now the second phase deals one and a half hearts of damage each hit, and those giant rainbow waves deal three hearts, so it's, uh, I can die in two hits by this boss, basically. So if I'm unlucky or not careful, I can very, very quickly die. So what he wants to do here is he wants to position himself so that when the boss jumps towards him, that it'll rebound, uh, rebound off of the wall, and then he won't have to move. The boss is only vulnerable right now during this attack. The rest of the time he isn't. Like not right now he's invulnerable. And I still I, I still hold the, the fire button because I'm used to it, but it doesn't do anything. I took one hit there. Oh, that almost nice got dodge. hit by the way. Yeah. And you can see the attacks getting more and more powerful the lower the boss's health gets. Okay. My health is pretty good right now, so I'm not too scared. I'm getting close. Time is going to be as soon as the boss blows up. Okay. One more phase should do it. Yeah, this should do it. And time. Nice. Good run. Nice job. And so Moon Snail was defeated. Um, so yeah, that was uh, the any percent run of Snail Yad. Um, I'm I'm thinking of running 100% after EGDQ, but right now I haven't done a run. But I think uh, that could also be a really interesting run. Um, For sure. I, I got what a 650 something I think in 652. game time. 652. 652 in yeah. game time. That's. Uh, a little bit over a minute over the world record. I got a 541 in the week before a GDQ. So um, I'm thinking maybe 530 might be the fastest time possible with the current strats. So 541 was a really, really optimized time. Mm -hmm. But I'm really happy that I got a deathless run in the sub seven. So uh, I'm gonna let the credits roll there not too long, I think. <clears throat> Alrighty, and we've got a $20 donation from XD Anon D says, hey, hey, AGDQ, I drew a number of enemy sprites for Snailiad, and I'm a longtime friend of Auraplane, the developer for this game. I've watched games done quick for years, and I'm happy to donate to prevent cancer yet again. We are positively thrilled to see Snailiad make it into a GDQ. Being gamers ourselves, it's pretty mind-blowing to see the game taken to the next level, beating out the dev times. Thank you for the great run, Bismuth. Thanks, and uh, by the way, I, I also wanted to give a huge shout-out to uh, Auraplane. Uh, basically, she's a developer of this game, and she was extremely helpful. Uh, basically, whenever I had any questions, I could contact her directly, and she would answer everything. Uh, she also provided me with a, an a executed version of the game, because uh, normally you can find this game just on uh, on the internet. It's a Flash game, and um, so I, I got an executed version and also a bunch of fixes w about like small issues I had. So uh, I'm really, really thankful because uh, uh, she really made it a lot easier to run the game here and uh, she really was really nice to me. So 
huge shout out to Aura Plane and also thanks for this really nice game that I enjoyed for probably about 60 hours 60 hours already and uh, probably a lot more once I run 100% and also end you because <laughs> end you must be pretty cool but seriously why not thanks and you all right we're gonna get the final screen here with the uh, it's kind of like uh, at the end of Metroid when you see Samus with other suit. It's basically the same thing. It's gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> basically the same. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there it is. That was Snail Yad. Sub 7. Good job. you guys enjoyed the premier snail-based Metroidvania platformer game. As Bismuth mentioned, you can find it online to play for free if you'd like. You get a $5 donation from Unsettled Ash that says, here's five bucks for that, guys. Awesome snail picture. Awesome work. We got an $8.40 donation that's anonymous, simply says, with love. And uh, now we're going to run a quick ad. Yeah? Be back in just a moment. Alrighty, we are back. Got a $5 anonymous donation. 